what's not to love? Hello, 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 and welcome to the Knitting Page Podcast. My name is Paige, and I'm the face behind the Knitting Page Podcast. So if you're returning, thank you so much for your support. We recently just hit over 1,000 subscribers, which <laughs> blows my mind that that many people want to listen and tune in, but it honestly means so, so much to me. And if you are new here, welcome, and I hope you like what you see. <laughs> Anyways, for today's video, I'm going to talk about 10 things that I wish I knew when I started my knitting journey. And I do want to preface this in saying that I started to knit when I was six years old, when I got a little craft kit for my birthday and it had a crochet project and a knit project. I went through the crochet project because it had beautiful flowers and the knitting project was just a boring scarf. But my mom only knew how to knit, so I learned how to knit and it's been a craft that has been a major part of my life <laughs> ever since. I've had periods where I've knit like a fiend and I've had periods, years, where I haven't knit a stitch. But I'm currently on a mission to keep knitting part of my life because I love what it does for me. So here are 10 things that I wish I knew as a beginning knitter. And I've kind of curated these as, as if I was learning to knit now because I, I have had a few friends reach out to me and kind of ask about getting started on their knitting journey. And so these are my 10 tips. And before I get to my 10 tips, I did just want to say that today I am wearing, I believe this is sweater number 11 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And yes, it's not a sweater. I didn't knit the sleeves. I had a poll on my Instagram whether or not I should knit the sleeves or keep it as a vest. And people liked it as a vest. So here it is. And I do love it. And the reason I put this on is that when this video posts, I will officially be done teacher's college. Yes, I will be graduated. Well, actually, that's a lie. I won't be graduated, but I will have finished all of my class requirements. I will have submitted all my assignments. And so this is a sweater that I knit in my school colors. I go to Queen's University in Kingston. So I knit it in the, the navy, the yellow, and the red as to commemorate Queen's, but also to have it not be like... If you know, you know, you know? <laughs> but yeah, wearing this sweater because when this posts, I'll be done. And I, yeah, it's been a journey, but I'm so excited to be a teacher. And anyways, let's get to it. Starting out. <laughs> I feel like when you are a beginning knitter, everyone points you towards straight needles. And my first thing I wish I knew is to not be afraid of circular needles. I love circular needles. I currently have three projects on the go. I have way more than that if you watch my recent podcast, but I have three projects on the go that show how you can use circular needles in different ways. So this has been a languishing whip, but here I'm using circular needles to do something called magic loop to knit a sock. And yes, when you begin sock knitting, you probably won't do something this complicated, but if you do, kudos to you. I definitely wasn't knitting something as complicated for my first pair of socks, but circular needles allow you to knit small circumferences on circular needles. So you can knit socks, you can knit mitts, you can knit toys. The world's your oyster. Of course, you can also use circular needles to knit back and forth like you would uh, like you would if you were using straight needles. So here, if you've watched my trends video, you'll know that summer of P.O.P. is here and aha, uh -huh, I'm knitting a pink cardigan and it's wool and it's mohair and it's the summer, but you know what? I'm loving it. And this is currently the project I want to reach for, but here I'm knitting a cardigan back and forth just like I would on straight needles. But the nice thing about circular needles is that you can buy cords or a needle. I use interchangeables for the most part, but you can buy needles that are longer than your straight needles. Like imagine if you had a needle this big to use as a straight needle, like it wouldn't, it would be crazy. You'd look like you were knitting with hiking poles. And so, yeah, 
You can knit back and forth just like you would. You can knit your basic dish cloths or whatever you do to learn to, you know, the basic knit stitch, but you can knit back and forth on circular needles. I know it doesn't necessarily always make sense, but it is possible. And of course, circular needles. You can knit in the round. Here's a top I'm working on. You can knit in the round and do make make a circle and just knit around and around and around and around. And it's amazing. Don't be afraid of circular needles. I know they look scary because they're connected and you're like, what is this? This is not what grandma knit with, but they're okay. And if you buy circular needles, you'll be able to do everything you want to knit on your first pair of needles that you buy. So the second thing I wish I knew is don't be afraid of knitting in the round. <laughs> and I feel like people all the time, like when they ask me about what they should do as like a first knitting project, they're like, oh, like a baby blanket. And I'm like, that's a lot of knitting. And that's, that's a lot of purling. And I don't know, maybe you love to purl. I'm personally not the biggest fan of purling. I do it because I love cardigans and I like drop shoulders, but for the most part, I just love knit stitch. I love stockinette. I don't know, maybe I'm weird. I know some people hate stockinette. I love it, but knitting in the round is not something to be afraid of. I think, no, I, yes, the first garment I knit, I can insert photo here is was this cardigan and i have no idea what the pattern was but it was basically i knit giant squares and i seamed it all together and i could have just knit the sleeves in the round and the nice thing about knitting in the round is that if you want to do a nice stockinette stitch which is basically just where it looks like like the regular fabric that you buy at the store if you no stockinette, you know stockinette, but like if you're new and you've never done it before, stockinette's like where it just looks like little V's the entire time. You never have to purl. You just knit, 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 knit. And joining in the round is really not that scary. Instead of turning your work around, you just join it in. But yeah, I don't know, honestly, like a baby hat, a hat, like that would be a great first project. Maybe you do just want to start with a dishcloth because, you know, you do just want to practice that knit stitch and you know who cares if you have a hole in a dishcloth like it's gonna get holes anyways but like a hat would be such a great first project just basic stock knit hat you know maybe you could throw a little ribbing in there so you can practice your purling but don't be afraid of knitting in the round it honestly is life-changing once you learn how to knit in the round you're like why was i knitting hats flat and seaming them together that was that seems ludicrous now as someone that knits in the round almost exclusively my next thing i wish i knew is to not be afraid of your local yarn store. I don't know what it was. I know, I mean, I was a kid, but I felt like as a new knitter, like I just, I'm from Canada, by the way, I just had to go to Michael's and like, it was Michael's was the only place that like me as a new knitter was welcome to. I felt like when I like, like local yarn stores were like these, like you had to be a certain level to walk into them because they had like real yarn no oh my gosh absolutely no your local yarn store is such a great tool for you as a new knitter a everyone that works at your local yarn store is like obsessed with knitting otherwise they wouldn't work at your local yarn store and so they're going to be more than happy to answer your questions and help you get into this craft because there's much more to knitting than just michael's your local yarn store will often offer classes that's a mouthful to say. We'll often offer classes. They'll like, they'll be experts on gauge and needle size. They can recommend you to uh, patterns that, you know, are suitable for where you're at. Like they can help you fix a mistake. Your local yarn store is a great resource as you begin your knitting journey. And although, you know, I'm not gonna bash on Michaels. They have some you know, affordable yarn, it's a great place to start, but don't be afraid of your local yarn store. Everyone that's at your local yarn store is going to be a knitter or a fiber person of some sort. That may not be the case at your local Michaels. And you just, the, the local yarn store wants you to come in and your purchases and your time and your interest in them mean so much. So please don't be afraid of your local yarn store. Okay. On that note, number four is you will make mistakes. Guarantee you, I still make mistakes. Like almost all the knitters I know still make mistakes. 
you will learn to fix your mistakes as you gain more experience and you knit more. But as a beginning knitter, you will make mistakes. And I feel like it's really important not to get caught in the trap of comparison. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm going to be a teacher and I knit my grade four or five class where I knit. I taught my grade four or five class how to knit during my practicum. And they were like, my work doesn't look like yours. And I was like, yeah, and that's totally okay. Do you think my work looked like mine now when I learned to knit when I was six? Like, no, it took me years and years to have my knitting be something where I can not look at it well, and still knit and have, you know, me have great tension and things like that. And like practice really does make perfect. I mean, there's no such thing as perfection, but practice helps in your knitting when you're starting will you'll make mistakes you'll drop a stitch you'll do random yarn overs and you'll knit them and it's totally okay and that's where the dishcloth comes in you know if you have a hole in your dishcloth who cares but once you've done a dishcloth or two like it's okay to move on and you can knit a hat and you can still make mistakes in your hat and have it be your first project but yeah you're gonna make mistakes and it's gonna be frustrating and you're gonna be like how does how do you do it? And you'll eventually, if you stick with it, which you should stick with it, you'll be like, wow, this is how it works. And I'm actually having confidence in myself as a knitter. And I feel like I can knit anything that I see more, you know, within reason. But yeah, you'll make mistakes, but you will learn to fix mistakes. So that brings me to number five. Join a knitting circle or a knitting club. I just feel like a local knit circle or a local knitting club is again similar to, similar to your local yarn store. It's a great resource to have people that are potentially more experienced than you help a fix your mistakes because they'll usually be like, "Oh, like don't worry, I can just fix up, pick up this drop stitch, like no problem." They can help you with pattern suggestions. It's just like another person. I don't know if you're anything like me, you may also have like an obsessive personality where you just want to talk all about what you're into and like maybe your friends don't want to hear about everything knitting related and but your friends from your local knit circle or your knitting club like they're going to be more than happy to hear about knitting and talk about different yarn and different projects and different designers and like it's a great place to kind of build that camaraderie over a shared love of crafting and knitting people are awesome so join your local knit circle number six you don't have to spend a lot of money to get into knitting even at Michael's, yarns are still expensive, but I mean, you can't knit for free unless people gift you things, but you don't have to buy the most expensive yarn or the most expensive needles or the most expensive whatever to get started. I will also caveat that by saying that your products that you invest money into in terms of like buying nice quality yarn and nice quality doesn't necessarily have to mean expensive but the garments that you make out of yarns that you love you will end up wearing and I know when I so last summer was kind of like the kickstart of like my knitting journey like 4.0 at this point like but I went to my local thrift store well I went to Value Village and they had a whole bunch of circular needles and like a knitted needle case for like $5.99 or something like that so anyways I had like all of the common needle sizes like 3.5 millimeters 4 millimeters 4.5 millimeters 5 millimeters like 5.5 millimeters like basically all like DK worsted weight size needles in a pack for $5.99 and you know they're they were like the the ones you get from michael's but still like it was a great deal to get because all of my i do have interchangeables but they were up um back home at my parents house and i wanted to get knitting like now i didn't want to have to wait to for them to either ship it or for me to go up in like a month or so and visit them so i went to value village and i found a full set of needles um or a full set you know what I mean like a whole bunch of needles in a little pack like the little bags they put with a whole bunch of needles in it for a super reasonable price I also found a giant ball of cotton yarn you know the cotton like it's like dishcloth cotton anyways I made shorts out of them I love those shorts I don't necessarily love like 
the variegatedness in the pattern that the yarn works up, but the shorts are super comfortable. I got that for probably $12, like together, like $6 for the needles and $6 or $5 for the yarn. Very affordable. And I wish I'd put a, uh, an elastic band in the shorts instead of a drawstring. But then I also went back to Valley Village and I bought some random acrylic yarn and I made a tank top out of it and I have never worn that tank top. And you may be someone that's like literally allergic to wool and any animal fibers and you have to knit with acrylic. And there's certain time and place where acrylic is very wonderful. You know, if you're knitting for like a, a baby blanket that needs to be washed, if the baby, you know, has an accident on it, like yes, acrylic's washable. But I will say that I rarely reach for my acrylic pieces. I do have some wool acrylic blends that I do find a lot more wearable. Um, I oftentimes knit for friends or family in a wool acrylic blend just because I want, like for them, it's important that they can just throw their knitwear in the machine and have it not felt and change size. And so totally cool. But if you are wanting to delve into the natural fiber world and like 100% natural fibers so 100% wool I mean cotton is quite inexpensive but there are some really affordable 100% wools if you're based out of North America and particularly based out of Canada Briggs and Little is a wonderful yarn company that makes affordable Canadian yarn or Canadian wool um and I've knit two full garments out of Briggs and Little. I've knit the Miles shirt jacket and I did a test knit for Cove Knitwear and knit the Hella sweater. Love both of those, those pieces. It is relatively rustic, um, but again, it's a great afford, like I wanna say that it's seven or eight dollars Canadian for an 100 gram skein. And so that's like quite affordable. I, you can knit a full sweater or cardigan for under $50. Um, for the most part. I mean, sizes, de depending on the size unit, you may need fewer or more balls, but you can generally get a lot of yarn for a great price. Yeah, so that is Briggs and Little. Um, Estelle also makes, we currently have a project on the go in their East Eco Worstland Shetland. Yeah, Eco Worsted Shetland. And that is again like $14 per 100 gram skein. I got it from my local yarn store. It's quite affordable um, for my size, which I usually need a size small. I need like five or six balls. So under $100 for a garment, but knitting isn't the cheapest craft to get into. But I was talking with a friend the other day and I was saying that like, it's also a slow craft. So if you think of the amount of money that you spend, like you may spend $100 to knit a sweater, but that sweater takes you two to like six weeks to make depending on how often you knit on it the the how big it is how long it is how complicated the pattern and the stitch uh you know the stitch pattern is and like a hundred dollars over a month for a hobby that you love isn't really that much in the grand scheme of things a lot of people will pay a hundred dollars to go to a singular concert and people will pay a lot more to go to a concert or even to go out for dinner, you know, it's fairly hard to go out for dinner and not pay at least $30. And that's one hour, maybe two hours of your time. So, I mean, when you look at it as in terms of money spent on time, it really isn't that expensive and you don't have to buy the most expensive yarns. You can, you know, 100% start out going with acrylic from a thrift store, acrylic from Michael's and using their, their great coupons that they offer or a great sale, but you can also go to your local yarn shop and they often do have a variety of price ranges available for the yarns that they sell. And if you're Canadian, I highly suggest looking into Briggs & Little because A, it supports Canadian wool and B, it's really affordable, their yarns are great, and C, they have great color selection. So like, what's not to love? On the note of good yarn, like good yarn means you'll have projects that you'll probably wear for longer Number seven is good patterns make knitting a lot more fun. I used to kind of be adverse to paying for patterns. I was like, oh, I've already spent all this money on yarn. Now I have to spend another like $10 on a pattern. But my view on that has drastically changed recently. I think that designers put 
so much time and effort into making patterns and test knitters put so much time, effort, and usually money into testing these patterns that the $10 you spend on a pattern really goes a long way. And that by buying patterns, you do also support the knitting community um, and kind of allow for people to, you know, create more patterns and try different things. Um, that being said, there are some wonderful free patterns out there, but there's also, I'm sure there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of free patterns that aren't that great and aren't that beginner friendly. There may also be a lot of paid patterns that aren't that great and beginner friendly, but from the most part, all the paid for patterns that I've knit are much better than the free patterns that I've used. And designers, especially if you purchase from someone who's a little smaller, like they're usually more than happy to help answer a question. But yeah, look, if you have a good pattern, then any experience that you're going to have is going to be exponentially better than if you use it, than if you use a free pattern with, you know, instructions where you have to read between the lines and kind of assume and make guesses. And like, maybe they don't necessarily give you the instructions for how to do increases or whatnot. It's really nice to have a paid for pattern where things are thoroughly described, videos are linked. Like I would just, and you know, it supports your knitting friends and they may not be your personal friends that you like would go out for coffee with, but the knitting community is close and very supportive. So yeah, good patterns make for good knitting experiences. I guess my number eight actually was that paid patterns are worth it, which kind of ties into number seven. So seven slash eight are good patterns make knitting fun. And eight is that paid patterns are worth it, in my opinion. Number nine is that knitting Instagram and YouTube is a great place to learn and connect with other fellow knitters. I know sometimes, like I currently live in a relatively small town close to Kingston, and sometimes it can be hard to like meet up with people but I have a lot of great knitting friends that I've met online. The dogs just came in and I do think that knitting Instagram especially is a great place to see inspiration and new patterns and I feel like a lot of people default to Pinterest and although print Pinterest is great, knitting Instagram in my opinion is the place to be for inspiration, for meeting new people, seeing different yarn combos, I just think knitting Instagram is a great place to be in terms of connecting with the global knitting community and just kind of seeing things. Yeah, seeing things and seeing different patterns, connecting with people, making those connections. Okay, and last but not least is that you will continue to learn along your knitting journey. You will continue to learn terms. You will continue to learn skills as you evolve as a knitter. I know when I started out, like last year on knitting 2.0, I had no idea what gauge was. I had no idea. Like I was, I thought all yarns were like 50 grams of worsted was the same as 50 grams of lace. Definitely not the case. You know, 50 grams of worsted, you can maybe knit a pair of mittens out of that. 50 grams of lace, you can get a full top out of it if you're holding it alongside like a fingering weight yarn. And so those were the things that I learned mostly through trial and error. I had my camisole number five that I knit at a sport weight slash DK weight, bought the right amount of grams, like 150 grams, quickly learned that there are way few fewer meters in sport weight yarn than there are in, or in DK weight yarn than there are in fingering weight yarn. And so my camisole wound up cropped and the yarn I was using was discontinued and I couldn't buy any more. And so yeah, I have a cropped camisole number five because I didn't understand yarn weight. And that was something that I since now pay more attention to and try to make more informed decisions about, but it's something that I learned along the way. And you too will also learn along the way as you embark on your knitting journey. So I hope you enjoyed my 10 tips about what I wish I knew as a beginner knitter. And if you are watching this as a beginner knitter, let me know if these were helpful. And if you are an experienced knitter, let me know if you wish you also knew this or if there's any other tips that you would add. I I think it's nice to like make knitting less intimidating because I feel like sometimes people are like, I don't know how you do it. And like, 
it's the same stitch over and over. It just takes a while to master it, but once you do, you're golden. So till next time, stay well, stay hydrated because it's the summer, and I'll see you in a week. See ya.